You just installed a new set of TerraFlex brakes on your Jeeps. First thing you want to do is check them for braking goodness. Now how you're going to do that is you want to jump inside your Jeep and just stand on that brake pedal. That thing should be rock hard. A rock hard pedal is going to tell you you have good brakes. Yeah, not so much. Now some of us remember the dark days of no power brakes. Those boys and girls are the days of a hard brake pedal and the wide-eyed stare of a driver trying to get the thing stopped with both feet on the pedal during an emergency stop. Yeah, that's not good. Let's talk about the braking systems of today and why they stop so well even with what could be perceived as a soft pedal. You got a power brake booster back here, master cylinder, some brake lines come down, they come down to here to your caliper, you got some brake pads in there, and a disc brake rotor. Let's just talk a little bit about what each one of those does. Now this is going to be general, okay? We're not going to get all carried away, and I, I know that some of you out there have extensive knowledge on friction coefficients, um, flow dynamics, and, and hydraulics, and I know that you're going to be eager to share that extensive knowledge with each one of us in the comments. Bless your hearts. First up, let's talk about the power brake booster. Now we're only going to talk about vacuum boosters here. You know that big round hemorrhoid pillow looking thing that's bolted to the firewall under the hood in front of the driver? Yeah, that's where the magic of braking assist happens. Inside that brake booster is among other things a big A diaphragm. And one side of the diaphragm is exposed to vacuum well, on the other side, it just has normal atmospheric pressure. So when we're looking at how this brake booster works, that atmospheric pressure is a pretty impressive thing. So you've got this booster with a diaphragm in the middle of it, and one side is going to get some engine vacuum pulled to it. So you hit the brake pedal, we pull vacuum on this side, and that diaphragm is going to be pushed over because vacuum is pulled out, atmospheric pressure is pulling, and that diaphragm is going to push hard. So when you push on the brake pedal, it's going to assist you big time in pushing that brake pedal, which has a rod that goes straight into the master cylinder, and it's going to push hard. And that's that power brake boost that we feel. In fact, there's a quick test you can do to, to see if your power brake booster is working right. Just hop in the Jeep, and then don't start it yet, but just pump your brake pedal. You'll feel it kind of soft at first, and then it'll just get rock hard. Once it's rock hard, push down on it and hold it and start it. Once it starts, you'll feel that brake pedal slowly sink to the floor. And it sinks a long way if you're standing on it really hard. It's, it's pretty impressive. That's the power of the booster that's pulling that pedal down. Uh, power brake boosters just change that pedal feel from a rock hard pedal that doesn't give you any brakes to a, a little softer feel that stops like crazy. So that's the vacuum assist side of our braking system, but there's also a mechanical as well as a hydraulic side of the braking system. We'll take a look at those now. Now just to give you an idea of how an actual master cylinder works, we're going to, uh, we're going to take just a minute here and show you using this Scream Machine hyperbolic water launcher as a crude representation of a master cylinder. We'll go ahead and fill the master cylinder with some brake fluid here. Now when you push on the brake pedal, man I wish I could still throw a wire like that. It throws a pretty good stream, but let's see what we can do here. Okay, that's not bad, but let's see what happens when we use a power brake booster with our brake pedal. Brake pedal ready against there. Now we're going to use power brake booster right here. Bam! It makes a lot more pressure and that's impressive. Thanks Joe. Oh, that's an actual tear. Sorry Joe. So when we push on the brake pedal and then the power assist kicks in, it pushes it down and there's a rod that goes into the master cylinder and it pushes on that piston in the master cylinder and it moves fluid out to all the brake lines and out into the calipers at the wheels. All right, let's just take a quick look 
a mechanical advantage. You're on trying to undo a bolt, okay? You're on there, you crank it, it's really hard, you can't move it, it's just too hard, it's too tight. Lengthen it out, holy cow, piece of cake, easy to do. That same mechanical advantage can happen with a rotor. If you've got a smaller rotor and you're trying to stop in here, it's gonna take a lot more power to stop it. But if you're way out here and clamping it, you can see the mechanical advantage of having a bigger rotor. And that's what we use on our big rotor kit. We just go to a bigger rotor, factory caliper. Doesn't change your brake pedal feel or anything. It just gives you a better stop. The hydraulic advantage side of the braking system is a bit more complicated, but the concept is the same as any situation where gearing or hydraulic rams are used. Just let's think of the gearing on your bike. You want to go up a steep hill, but you put it in a real high gear. You know, the gears you normally use for fast speed. With the chain on the big gear at the pedal and the smallest gear at the wheel, the pedal will feel rock hard. Oh yeah, that's a good hard pedal. But you could stand on that pedal, but the bike won't hardly budge. Mechanical advantage, it's all backwards. We should be in a low gear that makes the pedal feel soft or easy to push for more rotations, but the bike will move slowly forward without any kind of a Herculean effort. We start talking hydraulic advantage here and it's, it'll do a head game on you because we're used to thinking that if we have a, a hard brake pedal that we're gonna have good hard brakes because we can push on it and it doesn't sag down. The reality is, is if we've got hydraulic assist going and uh, a smaller bore master cylinder with, with big bore down here. We got that small gear, big gear thing going here. And we're gonna have a lot of pressure at these calipers, even though our pedal may have some give to it. Okay, so what happens when we just installed a set of Terraflex uh, Delta brakes or even our uh, big brake kit? Well, there's a few things. Number one, we gained some mechanical advantage because the rotors are bigger. So we, we went from there to there. So we got more stopping power just because of the, the rotor size changed. Uh, next, we, we changed the size of the disc pads. So we have more surface area making contact with the rotor, which gives us more friction area. So it's going to stop better because of the, the friction of the pads. And lastly, the piston size in it. So we still have the same master cylinder up there on the firewall. So that master cylinder is a relatively small bore compared to what we have here. So we've got that, that little gear to the big gear thing going. We've got a little spin, really got a lot of power to it on our bike. So there's our pedal spinning that little one. That's our master cylinder. This is back at the wheel. We've got a bigger uh, reservoir here. So gives us a lot of pressure to stop that. So we've got the size of the rotor, the size of the pads, the size of the, the pistons and the calipers all add up to a lot more pinch power and they stop. All right, so what does all this mean to our pedal feel? I mean, we still have the stock master cylinder, but we have bigger bores in our, in our calipers, so we're moving more fluid. So it's gonna take a little more pedal movement to move the fluid to get it down here to actually get our calipers to move where they need to be. So we might have a, a softer pedal feel or more travel than we're used to just because of that hydraulic advantage we got going there. But remember, a, a hard brake pedal doesn't necessarily equate to uh, better braking. But on the other side of that, you got to assume that you've got all the air out of your lines because air in your lines will give you a spongy feel and we don't want that. So what did we learn here today? We learned that our, our brake pedal feel doesn't necessarily equate to a good or bad braking, all right, for starters. But I think we've, we've probably learned enough today. I'm Dennis at Terraflex saying, you can stop now.